Life Network has been part of the Colorado Springs community for over 30 years now. We impact people at the point of decision that they have about life issues. When I found out that Hillary was pregnant, completely shocked. That was such a blur. Very confusing. I was like the most confused I'd ever been in my life. I couldn't believe it. Not being married. It just didn't seem real. So I was raised as a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. Not only am I a believer who's involved in ministry and loves the Lord, Stephen and I had decided to wait and we were waiting. And having that one slip up. We did mess up once. That one, it was that one time. I just felt so far from God and so ashamed of myself. We felt so ashamed because we knew better. I was so afraid. I'd never been more afraid in my life. We came in because we really didn't know what we were going to do. The first meeting was really basic. They just gave me options. At Planned Parenthood, it felt like abortion was the only avenue. With Life Network, they gave us options. Talking to Cindy, she brought up adoption. I don't know if you thought about that. I hadn't thought about it before. There was closed adoption, open adoption, semi-open adoption, and I had no idea about that. Co-parenting, raising the child together, and they helped us go down each one of those paths and then one day, we just decided we want to keep this baby. Okay, cool. If all we did was meet the needs of people in a crisis pregnancy situation, we wouldn't be any different than social service agencies. Life Steps is the aspect of our ministry that really walks alongside of young men and women who have made a choice for life. When I was 24 years old, I had no idea what it meant to be a father. I had no idea how to parent. This is a parenting, mentoring program, how to have a healthy pregnancy, what childbirth may be like, how to take care of an infant. I didn't know how to hold a baby. And then it continues on as the child gets older to issues like bonding, proper nutrition, safety issues for the child. They're not just there until the baby's here and then boom, you're on your own. They're there for two years after. They'll walk through with us. They meet with mentors twice a month. My relationship with Rob, he has just been there as like a second man in my life. What we hear from many of our clients at Life Steps is we are the only support system they have. That's really another huge reason that I needed Cindy. When we first found out, there was a lot of stress between us, me and Hillary. Rob really coached me through how to be calm because I have anger and I used to let it out playing football or sports or whatever and now I'm older and I don't have that. Life Steps really helped me to focus in on what was truth and not how I was feeling and not what I was hearing and not what I was going through. My wife's Life Step coach, Cindy, really explained to us how the Lord loves us no matter what we've done. Not only did they show me truth, God was still taking care of me and that He still, He had never left me even though He had felt so far away. Education for a Lifetime gives us an opportunity to interact with the community. We are a health-based curriculum given to the high school students. We come into the health class, we teach a five-day curriculum. Well, we describe what all sexual activity is. Why? Because there's a misconception out there. I see a lot of kids doing drugs, going out to parties, having sex. As a doctor and as a pediatrician, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was going into the classroom and talking about sexually transmitted diseases, infections, and, and giving that information to young adults. Because no one really teaches those things. HPV, human papillomavirus, is the most common out there. With the STI presentations, it's good for them to get medically accurate information. Sexual risk avoidance, right? Does anybody know what sexual risk avoidance is? Abstinence. Abstinence is talked about very specifically. Mittens and interlocking, is there a difference? Yes, this is brothers and sisters, and this is a little bit extra. Okay, it was right? very easy to understand, it was very fun. We are able to teach them about healthy relationships. Can you still make healthy decisions? 
We still make healthy choices, right? Yeah. We teach them about boundary setting. Boundaries protect things that are what? Boundaries protect things that are valuable. We talk about the media and how that influences their choices and decisions. Does sexting have consequences? I think the example that I love that he gives is he does a timeline. If we were to take a timeline of your life and stick it right in front of you. They're in 15 to 24 gap. What we do in our 25 always affects our 75. I think it was like a wake up call, not just like live for the moment. The presentation, it goes over really well. I mean, the kids are there, they're on time, they're actively engaged. We don't bring biblical scriptures into a classroom but we do have the opportunity and the influence to be a light into every single classroom that we're in because we are bringing truth. It's a very valuable program. We impact between six and 7,000 students every year as a part of this ministry. If you're looking at percentages, even if it can help a few, that's better than not being able to reach those kids that otherwise would never have a chance to hear it. Bridges of Hope is an outreach ministry to anyone who has been affected by abortion. There is a lot of disagreement about whether or not an abortion affects people that have made that decision. I was uh, 14 years old the first time that I got pregnant. My boyfriend at the time didn't want a baby. It was a two-day procedure. I just remember after that just feeling really empty, really lost. And then right after that I ended up getting pregnant again. My mom took me again and I don't even remember that one. So I just went on with life and, you know, years later, the Lord had showed me what I had done was commit murder. We know from experiences there is an effect. I felt like I was a low life. How could I do such a horrible thing? How could I choose a man over, you know, my own children? It is really hard for women to talk about abortions that they have had in their past. I feel that the enemy, uh, his strategy is to use abortion in women's lives to keep them in a place of bondage and guilt and shame. Before, there was areas of her life where uh, I knew she was angry. Which anger was a huge thing for me. I didn't know why. And I never thought of myself as being an angry person. For her, it was the type of anger where, you know, not, it wasn't destructive or putting holes in walls or throwing furniture around. The anger that I dealt with was in my mind. Like if I'd get angry at my husband, I would just wanted like, i think thoughts in my head of, things that I could do to hurt him. Just this, this vicious cycle, I'd get angry, and, and then, you know, these thoughts of suicide, and you know, here I am, a pastor's wife. It was a year ago that I went through Bridges of Hope, which is the post-abortion Bible study group. There are two aspects to Bridges of Hope. One of them is a support group. I was both overwhelmed and relieved to finally be in a room full of Christians, believers, that had been where I had. The other part of this is a more intensive Bible study that really helps to bring restoration and healing. As we went each week through denial, through depression, through suicide, anger. So have any of you ever thought about the idea of really forgiving yourself? What we have found many times is that particularly Christians will say to us, I know God has forgiven me. For so many years I didn't forgive myself. But I have never been able to forgive myself. And I didn't even know that I didn't forgive myself. There is such guilt and condemnation that comes with that many times. The lies of the enemy and the trap of the enemy. And as she began to continue this journey. To keep me back there. With Bridges of Hope is when she began to, this depression just began to lift. It was uh, a true healing to know that, you know, Christ, what He did on the cross was enough. I just knew God's working. I don't have to punish myself anymore. All of the Ministries of Life Network are provided free of charge all of the pregnancy tests, the ultrasounds, the sexually transmitted disease testing, our time spent in the schools, the counseling that is done, the mentoring that is done, the parenting classes that are done. Annie, stop crying! We exist because there are faithful individuals and churches who believe in what we do and want to be a part of this ministry and partner with us. 
God really mended our relationship and we decided that we wanted to be married and that we wanted to raise our baby together. We have our new house, we have our new marriage, and now we're gonna have a new baby. Just getting the feeler move now and getting the baby room all ready and decked out and just getting all the baby clothes. And I have this one little shirt that says Daddy's Little Draft Pick because I'm a huge football fan. I'm just really, really excited. The abstinence message that I got from David, you usually get that from your parents. Sometimes you don't even get that from your parents. I think most of us took a lot of that to heart. But once I began to see just the fact that God was using Life Network and Bridges of Hope to bring healing to my wife, because that was bringing healing to me. It wasn't just her, because we are one. Christianity and Christ really became real. Not that it wasn't before, but it's just different. Like, I felt like I just got saved again. Through this program and through prayer and our family and our friends, that now I have the love of my life, and she's about to give me the most amazing thing I could ever ask for.